Hi everyone, welcome back to my GNM Digestible Morsel series. So in the past video, I put everything together in a kind of step-by-step -step process to help you to understand what to do when you are in a biological program and that was TRUST, T-R-U-S-T. In this video now, I will be focusing on the last T in TRUST, which is tracks. This is probably one of the most complex aspects of GNM, but I will try my best to make this information digestible for you. I think the best way to explain something like this will be to give some examples. And also I will explain a complex experience of my own. So rather than squash it all into one longer video, this topic is going to be split into two episodes. In this episode, I'm going to explain what tracks are and how they're created and look at how they cause a hang in healing. Last time, I briefly explained that tracks are basically triggers that can re-trigger the biological program and disrupt healing. Now, this may seem like a nuisance or a flaw in the system, but surely by now you have realised that everything in nature has a purpose. So let's take a step back a moment so we can realise what these tracks are and what their biological purpose is in a simple way. So we'll take a look at how the mind works and how it experiences time. It may seem a little off track, excuse the pen, but it will all make sense, I hope. So have you ever noticed when you drive somewhere for the first time, it seems to take ages and then the next time you drive there, it is not so long. And then if you keep traveling to that place over and over again, it soon seems like it's just around the corner and all of a sudden you've arrived and you can't quite remember the journey. Now the same time has passed for that journey, but our perception of that time has become distorted. And here is the reason why. When we visit new places, our senses are very active and the mind is really alert as it is taking in all the new information and processing it. When you recognise things, the mind and senses become a little lazier and do not truly observe because they remember. But they notice a few points and fill in the rest with memory. And this happens more and more the more we recognise until something new happens or is observed and this puts the brain into a higher receptive mode to take in and process that new information again. So let's explain why the journey then appears quicker. Well, the more memories that we have of a certain situation or journey, meaning the more information that is pro processed, the longer that perception of time that lapsed has been. I mean, when you think of it, time is actually our perception of the past, not really the perception of the future or of this present time. What we think of as time is something that's happened and how long that has taken. So it's like our brain is saying, that must have taken an hour to gather in all of that new information, whereas in reality, it was just a half hour journey. When there is hardly any new information gathered, in that time, the brain thinks, well, that was a short journey because there was hardly any new information. The same is true of our lives in that we go into automatic pilot and most of our tasks are carried out subconsciously. Just try breaking through this and making your day last longer, such as wearing your watch on the other hand, uh, brushing your teeth with your brush in the opposite hand, go in a different route to work each day, just to keep things a little fresh. You will notice that time does actually slow down a bit the more that you change. So let's see how this is relevant to GNM. Do you remember right back to the DHS where it all begins? One of the symptoms of the DHS when someone first goes into shock is the feeling of isolation and that everything is in a dream. Sometimes like time stands still or is in slow motion. 
The reason for this is that your brain has gone into a super receptive mode, so it can take in as much information around it as possible. And the biological purpose for this is so it can create red flags as a warning. So if the DHS occurs again in the future, the body will be better prepared as the program will be triggered already into motion by the red flag or the trap. These red flags we call triggers or as Dr. Harmer called them, tracks. And they could be literally anything that you were perceiving at the time of a DHS. So it could be a food substance, a sound, a person, a place, a word, a particular tone of voice even, um, a situation that has a similar feeling to it as the original trauma, literally anything at all. And to make things even more complicated, we can have single and multiple tracks that are created when there is a DHS. It can depend on the intensity of the DHS and the overall state of health of the person too. So someone who is already under a lot of stress, whether this is mental, physical or emotional, can have an increased vulnerability to how they experience a DHS. And this stress can even increase their vulnerability to experience a DHS. A great example of this is when I had a major operation about 14 years ago, where I had some of my abdominal muscles removed. Cut a very long story short, this caused me to have multiple conflicts with multiple tracks involved. And I will explain this later because I think it will help to, um, to show you how these things can play out in real life. As I explained in the previous video, tracks can really disrupt the healing phase. And this causes a hang in healing, which is basically when we are kept in the program in a kind of loop. They can also cause the re-trigger of an old conflict. And this is experienced as not being in the loop of the program, but each time the track is experienced, the biological program reruns and then completes. And this you may call an allergy. This aspect I will look into in the next episode, but for now we will stay with the hang in healing. The most common hang in healing I have come across in my th therapy work is self devaluation. A hang in healing of self devaluation will cause what is known as arthritis, rheumatism, fibromyalgia, uh, recurring boils, and many other complaints. Pain, stiffness, inability to do something and further thoughts of self-devaluation are the main tracks for these conditions. So in these examples that I'm going to give, I'm going to call the person the healer, as they are in fact the person who is healing themselves. A therapist doesn't really heal, you see, but allows and facilitates the body's own healing. We are our own healer. So a good example of self-devaluation hanging healing often starts with an injury. Let's say in this case it is the spine. So there is stiffness and pain when the healer tries to move and they are unable to perform their usual tasks. Healing can take a while and require rest, though the healer gets angry and frustrated that they cannot get on with their lives. The pain becomes a track so whenever the healer moves the pain re-triggers the conflict or in other words, gives us a reminder that there is an injury or something wrong in that area. This will further increase swelling, causing more pain. As healing is in hanging and taking a long time due to repeated pain tracks, the healer begins thinking thoughts such as, oh, my stupid back, I will never get better. I will never be able to walk straight again. Or even ask the question, will I ever be able to walk straight again? So this adds more layers of self-devaluation. I'm going to do a separate video on self-devaluation as it is something we can really delve into. It can get really quite complex and have many layers and it is so rife today. So I think this warrants um, a deeper look. Another example of a very common hang in healing is indigestible morsel affecting the bowel. This can cause what is commonly thought of as a candida overgrowth infection. 
Now we understand that candida is a part of healing. Any prolonged infection is basically the hanging healing of an indigestible morsel conflict. Acne is another example of a feeling disfigured or soiled conflict which affects the Corian skin. The track for the disfigurement conflict would be the appearance of the acne. So you can see how these conflicts in themselves can create layers of new conflicts, a bit like a negative spiral. So beware too that there could be multiple tracks, which I found out myself. And now I will come back to my operation, which will hopefully help you to see how it can play out. So I'll, I explain this in more detail in a case study in part two of the Sacred Medicine event video, but I'll summarise it as much as possible here, although it is very complex. So this operation, like I said, was major and has resulted in a hip to hip scar and removal of my belly button too. In fact, over half a stone of my lower abdominal area was removed. I found this operation extremely stressful and emotional as I was really nervous due to it being such a big op and, and not also an op that I had long, been a long time waiting for. It resulted in a disfigurement conflict affecting my right foot, which was caused when I stepped out of bed and realised I couldn't stand up straight as my skin was too tight. It also caused an attack conflict across my lower, lower tummy where the scar is, where the incision was, and a feeling soiled conflict affected my left foot when I stepped out of the bed barefoot. And the nurse said, I wouldn't stand on this floor with bare feet. You don't know what you'll catch. And each of these conflicts caused tracks, some of them multiple. Now, it sounds quite extreme, but I really believe this is a good example of how being in such an emotionally vulnerable position can increase the susceptibility to DHS and tracks. Because otherwise, when you think about it, my body's reactions were quite dramatic. So the tracks of my left foot were mostly walking bare feet, especially on the cold floor, and having dirty feet or what I thought perceived to be dirty feet, maybe walking in a dirty area or something like that, such as on the earth, which I love doing because I love earth and I love ground, grounding myself with bare feet. So obviously I was creating myself with this problem because the track was dirty feet. And the reason I knew this is because it would flare up after putting shoes on, therefore resolving the barefoot track, putting warm socks on, or my feet getting warm in bed, resolving the cold track, and after a bath or foot bath, which resolved the feeling dirty conflict. And additionally, it would get better when I would walk bare feet out in the grass. So I would be thinking that earthing was the cure, whereas actually it was putting it into conflict active phase where there are no symptoms. So I knew there was something triggering the attack conflict on my scar as each month the scar becomes affected for a few days. This still is happening now. I realised the track was linked to my monthly cycle as it is completely corresponding with the time of the month that I had the operation. My right foot tracks were barefoot, especially on cold floor again. Seeing my scar in the mirror, and when my scar would flare up with the bacterial activity. This explained why I would seemingly get these awful flare-ups on one side or the other, seemingly randomly, and then sometimes both sides would flare up together. And always, whenever I had an infection in my scar, my right foot would flare up. So I used to have these flare-ups at least every other day often multiple times, and they would last for about half an hour to an hour. The pain from the itching was so severe, I could not think of anything else at the time, and I would sometimes even leave blood footprints where I had paced around because they, that my feet were so open and bleeding. Often I would have to numb my feet with ice to stop the pain, so this was a really sort of... I, I found it quite debilitating when it, when it happened. 
Now, having worked through these tracks and understood the tracks and understood the whole process, um, they, uh, there's a huge improvement. I now have a small flare-up maybe lasting less than five minutes, about once or twice a month after, and this is simply after identifying and working on some of the tracks as well. I'll go into this in the next episode too. So as you can see, this is a very complex aspect of GNM, but hopefully this has helped you to have a deeper understanding on how and why tracks occur and also how they cause a hang in healing. In the next video, I'll be looking at how tracks cause allergies and what we can do to neutralise them. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Music